find it? Yep. Thank you. Thank so you for much. everything. I have you on so my fun. thing. It was great. I'm so sorry you're not going to be here this afternoon. It's unbelievable from the start. Have you seen it? No. I've seen sections of it though, and it's great. You, the, the office, terrific. Brain trust. Hi. Brain trust. He's definitely on. He's definitely on. <laughs> never ends. The beat never ends. What are some of the challenges today that you had to overcome? Oh my goodness, are you taping this for who? Behind the scenes. Behind the scenes. <laughs> uh, we were just saying we're exhausted. We're totally exhausted. It's only the second week. It's only Tuesday. Week on Tuesday. <laughs> it's only Tuesday. <laughs> behind this movie was to I had I had three motivations I wanted a buddy flick with women in it because you don't see buddy flicks with women in it and if you do they're always talking about men and relationships so it was just gonna be a flat-out buddy flick with women no relationships the other was that I wanted older women because that's also something that you never ever see and the third was that they needed to be extremely smart Bradley what figure it out for yourself we no longer work here. We had probably about uh, two dozen um, screen screenplay scripts submitted to us, um, from which we read and, and uh, made a final selection. Uh, fortunately, we were able to um, select somebody who um, was actually a graduate from uh, Middlesex Community College and had studied screenplay writing and her story was an uh, original story that we were very excited about. It involved women, they had a little dramatic action, a little bit of humor, uh, a little bit of tension, uh, had some special effects, so it had all, all the various elements. It allowed us uh, the ability to shoot the film on campus without having to go to complex locations. So the movie turns out to be about these two women who've um, worked at a research lab for 40 plus years and it's their retirement day, it's their last day at the lab and something happens, there's an emergency and essentially they wind up saving the day. Not to give away the ending, but there it is. <laughs> They do say the day. And action. Okay, third to speed, third to speed, take your time, stay with them. All right, now we're going to have to fix that because, uh, yeah. all right, all right. And uh, we'll, uh, you know, Francis, I'll tell you about that keypad detail in a minute, but just for now, do your thing. All right, now, let's let's see it turn green. It turns green. Who's on that? Tom. All right, now, you're going for the door, Carolyn. 
And you're going in, and you're following, and we're and we're kind of over Francis's shoulder. We see the screen, but now we come around and get our shot of the two ladies. Now, this is the thing, guys. There's always movement in Luke Gould's shooting. So he does Law and Order, and you and he just brought all of that technique here to uh, share with the students, and it was terrific. You know, he's a, a well-known and very um, well-respected uh, director and producer. So for me, as a producer myself, it's really fun to watch a, a talented director work. And action! All right, hold on. Let's go back. Still Let's rolling. go back. Put him back. You, you kind of lost him. Stay, stay with those times. Ready? Frame up. You don't want to talk to the actors too much. Uh, over talk is not good. And I was able to just say a few key things to them and they would always get it. And that's a sign of a very good, very smart actor. Okay. All right. Here we go. Put them back in your pocket. You're going to do this. You're going to do this. Here we go. And too much headroom, too much headroom, and action, Aaron. What's the concern with the clean sweep protocol? What's the concern? Up until now, it's you never... know, my character provokes some obstacles for the story, so it gets dramatic. Troublemaker. Tro yeah, but not, not on purpose. He's just ambitious and kiss ass, and he's smarmy, and yeah, I wouldn't say he was evil. No. With the script, the script is a lot of fun. The script uh, gives uh, all of the characters really uh, great possibility for range of emotion. You know, I mean, you can be funny at times, you can be angry at times. I mean, you have a you have a lot going on in in a short uh, amount of time. She has she has given us range of emotion, which is really nice. I just want to say that I just enjoyed everyone so much, Martha. Martha, the, <laughs> how she got those suits together and things. I mean, I just, <laughs> I can't even believe it because it was great. I was a little afraid because it's hard to breathe and, and, and walk around, but she was able to fix them so that, you know, they were quite workable. Tiffany and, and Rebecca and, I mean, just all, everyone, they've just been so nice. I really. It's only been, it hasn't even been an entire week, and I really feel like that I have known the, a lot of the people for a long time, and, and they were just so accommodating and s just sweet. And people don't have to act that way, they really don't. Here. And then I believe I'm continuing going to this mark right here where it's going to be a two shot of the two ladies playing for a while. And then the guy is about coming in. I'm not sure what's happening. When they're turning to that, or you just don't know. I don't know. The first two weeks of the program was basic instruction on all of the job responsibilities in the camera department who does what, why the division of power and we had in-class practice exercises with a film camera and a digital camera so everybody got the chance to operate the camera to pull focus, to slate, to do all of the jobs prior to the start of the production. We have four key positions in the camera department, camera operator, first assistant, second assistant and digital utility. Digital utility since the advent of shooting more and more on HD and even SD video they deal a lot with the cabling, setting the, the settings on the digital camera, things that the film camera assistant wouldn't normally know how to do. Because if I was to hook his camera up and I'd have three different images, you would see three different colors and saturations. But we've been trying to maintain the A camera as our primary, and we're trying to get this one to be about as exact as we can get it. So the Panasonic, it says HD, it's film HD? It's filmed in high def, right? So we're good? Can I have a quick last look? Yes, thank you. Yeah, Our director has chosen to do a lot of these shots and scenes handheld, which means the camera operator has the camera on their shoulder, and they're basically doing all the movements 
using their body, panning and tilting, following the action. And that can be challenging for a professional camera operator, but even more so for uh, a beginner who hasn't done it a lot. It, it puts a lot of strain on your back, on your legs, and you have to learn how to move. You move differently when you're holding a camera than you would just normally walking down a hallway. Oh, it's, it's feeling the burn. Yeah. Just... Oh, we have seen the lab and uh, the lab, and uh, we, they require a lot of uh, uh, detail on lighting. Uh, we have to run a lot of cables, try to hide them underneath uh, the desks, and uh, we have to make sure make sure that nobody uh, trips on the cables. We have a grip room across the hallway, and we have to go and get the cables and the lighting that the uh, grip requires at the moment. So we have to work very fast. Uh, we only have a few minutes to set up and, uh, you know, uh, go for the wall. Can this one gets more stuff. And then the other trick to this is making sure we have all the accessories so if we need it we don't have to run away. It's like all these little things. And we'll flip it on here as soon as we get juice. I'll take a second here. And the last thing we do is get out of everyone else's way. You never experience some of the things that you just completely take for granted, that you just assume, well, this will take no time, this, is a, this isn't easy, this is a no-brainer. But to someone never doing it before, someone never being in this environment before, I mean, all of a sudden there's tension, there's, there's anxiety, there's uh, sort of chaos in a way. Newcomers to it, it's like all of a sudden it becomes this whole process where you know they're all thumbs and they haven't quite figured that part out, and somebody's yelling at them, and mm. and it's a good process. In other words, in the beginning they look clumsy, but you know within a day or two of, of really being in that environment, all of a sudden it's like I can do this. I know how to do this, and and it, it, something clicks, and that's really. Really, really cool to see. We're taking the script in the call sheet, call sheet, reducing it onto twos, and then the script for the scenes that they're going to be shooting. We reduce it, we cut it, we staple it. The AD department comes in in the morning, picks all these up, and they give them to everybody that needs them, usually the director, the first AD, anybody that needs to know what scene is and what they're doing. We will get everything in the morning from the end of the day, the camera report, the sound report, the production report, the script supervisor's notes, and on all of that we have to take the information from there and make sure it's correct on the production report before we can produce the production report. At the lunchtime, they need a, a report, they sort of call the hot sheet. They want to know how many scenes were done, how many pages were covered, how many uh, minutes were shot, um, and how many setups were done. And then right away, they're looking to see, based on the other documents that you've sent, sent them about what was scheduled, whether or not they're um, on schedule, over budget. Um, since sometimes you have to sort of man an office 24-7, depending on if they're shooting nights, will be at half staff because you have to stagger the personnel. So everybody's pretty much putting in the same amount of time, but not necessarily no, at the same time. At the same time. <laughs> <laughs> You're grabbing that line on the boom and making it sound as if she was propping on my Then you come down. I'm talking about a second to make this work. Working the board is, is a challenging experience because 
you have to listen to what's going on on set and make sure you're ready with the sliders to move the mics up and down, the volume of the mics up and down. Because if you're not quick enough, the sound won't come out right. So you want to get the best sound you can right on set. So you have to be right on when you have to pull the fader down so that you drop out a mic. So it's not ruining the uh, sound of the other actor. The sound crew is three people usually in a big, big production or medium-sized production. It's a mixer, someone who handles the boom, the fishbowl overhead, and what we call very uh, ingloriously the utility or third, who does a lot of very valuable work. And because it is at the bottom of the microphone every time someone puts it down and they slam it, it breaks. So I've gone through and I checked the continuity on each pin, and all the pins are working, and I've gone through through and I checked to see if all the connectors were connected. That's connected and now I'm stuck because I don't know what else could be broken. So now I'm just waiting on Larry to finish up and help me out here. As a boom operator, particularly as a boom operator, you must be in the moment because you may miss a little cue, the mic may not be in the right place. You've got to be in the moment and recover very quickly and react very quickly to what happens. Well, booming is very difficult because it's a physical activity that you're not really used to doing unless you're used to holding something over your head for long periods of time. And even though the boom pole isn't very heavy, once you add the mic on and the fact that you're holding your arms up for that long, it does take a lot of strength. I really probably need to go to the gym more. <laughs> yeah, it's rough. You know, it's been for too long. A lot of ADs have a bad rap because, you know, we're the bossy ones on set. All right, guys, roll sound, please. Running the set, basically, keeping everything on track, on schedule, telling all the different departments what needs to get done so that we can move forward. Back up, so you're out of the frame, like three more feet. Quiet on the more, set, please. Well, the first day I kind of just got thrown into being a first. I wasn't expecting it. Um, and it was scary because everyone's looking at you to, you know, say what comes next. And you're kind of bossing people around. and. Um, not everyone reacts well to that, but after a couple days, I think they all got used to it. Lock it up, please! Lock it up, please. I mean, because at first you don't know what you're doing if you've never done it before, but then once you get into the role, it's fun. What assistant directors also really need to learn to do is not just to run the set and manage the set, but to have a real respect for other people's crafts, because we help the director. What assistant directors are is we, we serve as liaisons between the director, the producers, the crew, and the actors. We're the voice of all those people. All their needs and wants get funneled through us, and then we funnel it back to make that stuff happen. They are looking for direction on what should be mounted on the top of the barrel, whether it's the toxic, the biohazard tickets. Um, okay. The call sheet is the schedule of production for the next day and uh, the uh, key second AD creates the call sheet and schedules all the elements necessary for the next day so that we have this complicated document uh, which tells everybody when they need to be where to do what and what we're going to do that day. And Mark, we got a couple okay, of people doubling up. Yeah. All right, so Mark, uh, for you be key second in the morning, which basically means we have to make sure this is cool. We put together the schedule for production uh, we determine if there are any particular resources that are needed to execute the script. Uh, we essentially coordinate all the various departments uh, to help fulfill the director's vision. And then we run the set. This will allow them to find work in Connecticut as production assistants to say, hey, I was a graduate of this program. I know what it's like to work on a movie set. I know how to behave. I know how to dress. I know how to compose myself. I know how to communicate with other people. I know how to manage crews, whether they're grips, electrics, cameras, sound, props, hair, makeup, or wardrobe. As an AD, I can manage them in a timely fashion and do so with politeness and do so with pride and, um, and tell them what's going on and tell them what we need them to do so we can make the movie together. And a lot of action going on there, with the flags patriotic waving in the distance. Did, did you ask them if they would be willing to have a film done? I didn't I get the opportunity to ask them that, but they seem to be very knowledgeable about when you do film uh, inspection. I didn't get the opportunity, but I 
I'm sure they would by sensing they had an interest in what I was asking them for questions. Right, but you have to realize when you go to fire houses that they basically their main function is to respond to emergencies. So if yes. I've ever found in a place like this, you really need to um, connect to the chief, not of that battalion, but to the overall fire chief in town. Okay. And if they make something like this available to you, they have to take it out of circulation, and that becomes usually an issue because if there is a fire to respond to, that's their priority. And if you're right. setting up a, s a scene to film there, mm -hmm. and you immobilize them for a number of hours, they can do their job. So fire firehouse is usually very tricky things to do. Related to the smoke effect, um, we've known about it in advance. We spoke to the building uh, facility manager, I gave him a heads up. It took a while for this process to go through because the initial reaction is everybody wants to kind of maintain status quo. They don't want to take the time to be bothered with uh, requests such as what will it take to disable the fire alarm. You know, it involves various ordinances and codes and uh, when we got the initial no, we basically asked what would it take to make it happen and first the answer remained no until I said, well, in the past, whenever we had to disable a fire alarm, we would bring a uh, fire marshal. When the marshal gets here, I'll let you know. But he, the marshal does not need to be present if I don't get to the smoke. Okay, right. right. No, he doesn't have to be here. He's just going to shut it off for us, and then he's going to turn it on at the end of the day. The production company basically hires you to propel the machine ahead. They don't hire you to convey negative messages that they cannot do certain things. And you always have to remain optimistic and hopeful that you will be able to solve the problem. We don't always get the opportunity to correct those mistakes, so we'll, we can tell the director, okay, this person made a mistake, they used their left hand instead of the right, and hopefully the director will, you know, give it a new take, but we're not always that lucky, but hopefully we, we correct all the mistakes before they happen. No, I mean, do, do you think he's printing just the last take of that? Or did you hear him say take two as well? I'm just gonna go ahead. Six shot, six frank. Okay, six frank. Take three. In our situation, we have limited space on set, and yet I have six script supervising students. So what I've asked is to have an offset um, monitor for those of my students who can't be on set while we're shooting. And on set, I'm having two students at the monitor next to the director so that they can interact with the director, which is what they would normally do on a shoot. Check your focus on the tongs. However, I want to mention that on any production, there is only one script supervisor. One overworked script supervisor. <laughs> I make a mistake. No, well, nobody can really catch it except, uh, except myself. I mean, you know, I take really detailed notes and I try to always um, double check them with you know the different departments. Okay, are you, is this how you know the her hand, or is this where her you know bracelet was yesterday when we shot? Because I didn't take a picture of it or something. But when I make a mistake, it's sort of you know it's that's what they call the bloopers of the movies. Out of the 149 students we had last year, uh, just e even though there's been very few m movies made in Connecticut this year because of the. Uh, Screen Actors Guild strike. Uh, a lot of our students have been going into New York and working on pictures. Uh, they've been, some of them have been um, hired by instructors from last year. Uh, some of them have been, uh, have sort of found their own way into other areas. Uh, there, there's a, the, the, the energy and the determination that was learned by the students last year is something that uh, they really take and run with. A lot of them are working here in Connecticut as we speak. There's a number of, of uh, commercials, corporate videos, um, uh, independent features that are shot right here in Connecticut, and they're able to take these skills and, and work on these other projects uh, uh, very, very successfully. I think one of the things that we don't talk about when we talk about the film industry coming to Connecticut is the culture it brings. You know, it adds to the cultural depth of the state of Connecticut. You know, this is an art form. 
And these are, these are artists working in the industry. They're not just craftspeople, they're not just technicians, they're artists. And that this industry adds to Connecticut's culture.